0624, you're up. 0624. Hello? Yo, what's up, man? Yo, it's, uh, it's me again, military guy. Oh, okay. Uh, Yo, what's back? up, man? Well, the what's Vietnamese up? guy. Yeah. The Vietnamese guy. Um, yeah, I was, uh, I looked, like, I looked through your the video again over and over and over. And then I went to my uh, supervisors at work, who were the ones who introduced me to your show to begin with, right? Uh -huh. And we were all talking about it. We were all trying to figure out, like, the best avenue. Because you, everything that you guys said was correct. But there were some things that you said that, um, this... You know, like you said that I didn't really, you didn't really know my relationship with her, and I don't, and there was very, some very unclear things as to, I like that uh, my supervisor was like, did they know that she's a virgin as well? I'm like, no, I don't think I said that. I just said that she didn't date anybody. Um, so the big like the big red flags that we we talked about was one, she's 29, right, and two, she's from over there. So mm -hmm. there, there is like a really big risk to bring her over here. Yeah. Um, and I looked into that too, and I like, and I was talking to them about it, and we were we were like, yeah, this, it's a huge risk. All this shit, with, uh, you know, that's going on. And I went and I spoke to her about it. Like I just, I was, I want to be honest, right? Because I'm not gonna lie, like I love her family. They're really great people. And when I went over there, the way they treated me and my family was full of respect, and there was a lot of love. You know, it's that like the Asian family kind of love, right? Um, so I spoke to her about it, and I wanted to be honest with her as to why I'm um, like having that conversation with her, mm -hmm. and and I told her, uh, yeah, I there's a lot of risk to bring you over. There's a lot of things that I want to pursue in my life, and I want to continue. Um, there's no, I don't really want to have take that big risk to bring you over, and then you know you can like eventually just fuck me over later on. Yep. Um, and I and I essentially just told her everything too, like you know you are 29 and. We don't really. I don't really know the whole reason as to why you're not with anybody, and how you are virgin this whole time. Mm -hmm. um, so it's this huge conversation I had with her, and she essentially, you know, she's like she's like crying and, and stuff like that. And I hung up the phone at, when she was crying. Yeah. And I waited for a little bit, and I called her again because I didn't want her to cry while we're having this conversation, you know. Uh -huh. And I call, and I call her again, and then now that she's calmed down, I told her like, okay. Um, what do you think about everything that I said? And she thought about it, and she told me that she loves me, and if I feel, if, she, if I feel like I, she could be a detriment to my future success, she doesn't want to bring me down. She like she told me that she wishes me like the best of luck and success in my life, and she's like very sorry that um, she won't be there to help me through the struggles that I'm going through. Uh -huh. um, she told me that she'll talk to her parents uh, for me, and she's like, you don't got to worry about any guilt or anything like that um so which also made me feel really bad at the same time right um so uh i just wanted to call back and tell you guys that that's what that's what happened um and what do you guys think um is there anything any more advice that you can give go ahead fresh what do you want to say first so first thing first um i get you wanted to talk to her to have closure mm -hmm. but i just think yeah Explain to your, her all that was kind of a bit much, but you did it anyway. Mm -hmm. um, and right. what did you expect her to say to you? Because, bro, she's not going to be like, oh, yeah, you're making the right choice. Go, go, good job. She's going to be like crying, upset. So, tell you what you want to hear, basically. Now, <clears throat> her family, bro, obviously they're going to be nice to you because they want you to marry her and things to work out. But mm -hmm. again, I think for you, bro, you need to figure out what you want because obviously speaking, you hit us up for advice. We gave you advice. You right. took it in a way and you wanted to confirm for yourself, which I understand. But then you went to her and I'm like, why? So to break this down fully, I think for you, bro, if you really want to make this work, like weigh the pros and cons. But at this point, you could probably guess from her response and maybe from like, I guess the family's like interactions with you, they want you to marry her. Now, mm -hmm. By default, right. you coming to her saying these things, now she's on guard. So she, she's going to say to you, of course, you know, uh, man, go do, live your best life. I wish I could be there for you, but I can't be. And to be fair, her tactic is going to be to make you feel bad about your choice. Now, she could be a, a good person. I'm not saying she's the bad person. I'm just saying that could be the play you don't know. So, again, I said it to say, you have to make a choice for yourself, bro. Obviously, this is going to be your future, your actual um, life. 
And I can't tell you what to do with your life. But what I can tell you is weigh the pros and the cons. And if the cons are weigh the pros, man, I mean, she's 29. She's, a, she's supposedly a virgin, which, bro, more often than not, I just wonder, why at 29 are you a virgin? Why are you still single? Something is adding up here. But again, I don't know everything. But what I do know is that she's older. She's not from your country. So if you bring her over here and she decides, oh, this isn't working out for you, it's going to be a huge loss for you. So, again, we had a pros and the cons, but, bro, telling her this directly like that, obviously she's not, she's not going to tell you, like, oh, yeah, you made a good choice. She's going to be, like, crying and upset and try to win on your emo emotions to bring you down and give her a, a yes answer. So, I mean, that's my take on it. Yeah. Um, the other thing, too, um, bro, is I, I don't believe her that she's a virgin, 29 years old. Like, the sun's off there. There's, something's wrong for her to be that old and no one – has taken her seriously or dated her or anything else like that. And the other thing too, bro, is that let's just keep it a thousand. She's looking at you as a meal ticket to getting out of Vietnam, being able to come to the United States and send money back to her family. That's the reality. Okay. And this is me speaking to you as a, as a, also as a first generation American. Um, that's just what it is when it comes to foreign parents, foreign parents, a lot of the times are more interested in their social status with their kids and what they do versus their kids happiness. Okay. This is in Nigerians and Arabs and uh, Indians and Pakistanis, etc. I don't give a fuck what you want to do. You got to be a doctor. You got to be a lawyer. It's, you got to be successful. They're more concerned with status and prestige over their children's happiness. So what I say here, and for all my foreign people, y'all know what the fuck I'm talking about. You guys know I'm telling the truth here. So what I'm saying is this. Her family and your family aren't necessarily going to tell you what's best for you a lot of times. They're going to tell you what's best for their status and best for what looks good. OK, and bringing people over from Vietnam and having a big family and you, you sending money back over there. That's what they're more concerned with. Right. They're, they're not concerned with the dangers and the risk that you're actually taking on by doing that. They're more concerned with the end product, but they're not concerned with the end product's risks. OK, and the end product's risks are she could leave you anytime. You, she, you, she could take all, uh, some of your um, she could take a bunch of your fucking money because, remember, she's going to come over here with no status. She's going to be relying upon you. It's going to take her a while to get her job. She's not going to be bringing any money in. And then on top of that, you're going to have to officially get married to her because you're going to get her a K-1 visa. So it's 100% going to be documented and the state's going to be involved in your affairs. So don't fall for the puppy dog, yo, this is fucked up, and the families and all this other stuff, because remember that the families don't always have your best interests at heart. The families have the family's best interests at heart, which is prestige, you being able to send money back, you being able to help out another Vietnamese family, keeping in, in the house, all this other shit. So that's what I need you to do is that you're the one taking the risk on, not your family. If she leaves you, etc., and you got to pay a child support, you got to pay alimony, and then your pension gets taken away from you, your thrift, your TSP, your TSP gets your thrift savings program gets taken away. You're the one that's going to pay for that, not your family. So um, you need to consider all these things very heavily, bro. And then also, like, dude, her age that worries me. And then also her saying that she's a virgin, I don't buy that. And it's it just too many things here, man. It's too much risk. And women switch up a lot of the times when you bring them from foreign places, man. It's not worth the risk. Yo, if you really want her that bad, you know what you do? Marry her. She, her ass stays in Vietnam. You go visit her. You don't bring her back over here. If you really love her that much and you and you want to be with her, cool. Then you know I'll meet you in the middle here because I already know that you're calling us back because you care about this girl. Yeah. So, and I know that you're probably gonna fucking try to get back with her anyway because uh, let's keep it a thousand, man. A lot of y'all niggas be simping on the side. It's fine. <laughs> what I'm saying is this: if you're gonna go ahead and no, do this shit, okay, now man, just just be quiet yeah, and listen. Yeah, just be quiet and listen because I already know you're calling us back because clearly you don't like what we told you. All right. Yeah. I already know that you're gonna want to go back and get with her. You want to do that shit? You're gonna have to do it in an intelligent manner. You don't bring her ass back to the United States. She stays in fucking Vietnam, and you go back and forth, and you visit her, and that's it. And then you send her money, <laughs> you, you take care of her. It's actually going to be cheaper for you anyway to do it that way, and you take no risk, and you can leave her ass at any time, but you do not fucking bring her to the United States. Call her. Because I already know, nigga, what you're trying to do now. Call I'm her. not stupid. You call back for a reason. Hey, yeah. <laughs> you call back for a reason. I know you're going to try to get with her anyway, so if you're going to fucking do it and you're not going to listen to me, fine. Then do it in the way that's going to be in a situation where you can still protect yourself and you're not going to deal with all the risk. Caller, you ever bought a used car before? Oh, uh, no. Let me, leave you, well, let me leave you with this uh, analogy here. So for the most part, right, you walk to the dealership, there's a used car, right? This used car, the salesperson is going to say to you, oh, this car is still great. It's good on mileage. Don't worry about the miles. It still looks good. It's probably, preferably a virgin, so to speak. And at the same time, this car is going to be worth its weight in gold. Go buy the car, right? So what is the common theme here? They have an agenda to push onto you. So the agenda is to sell the car because, hey, 
I want to get rid of it. It's been time, 29 years. This car has still been, been on the lot. And no one took it up to buy the car. Why is that? So understand, the family has, has an agenda. And like Myron said, it's going to be pushed towards what they want, not what you want. And again, bro. You and know they're not going to deal with the consequences if it fucks up. Scarcity mindset. There's many other cars out there, bro. I'm not saying she's a car. I'm just saying in general, there's other cars out there. So why focus on this car that's older with high, 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 high mileage when there's the young, younger cars out there with low mileage? That's the whole point here, man. Yeah, I mean, look, man. We already know what you're gonna, what you're trying to do, or what you want to do. That's why you called back. Yeah. What I'm saying is, if you're gonna go ahead and do that, even though I don't want you to do it, I'm let me give you the best advice so that you mitigate the risk. Yeah. Go ahead, be with her, but she ain't coming to the United States, bro. You're not filing a K-1 visa. You're not doing that shit because I'm telling you, bro. <laughs> too many cons. Yeah, man. Too, way too many cons. Too much risks, and then and then she's gonna be, um, you're gonna be on the hook for a lot of shit. You're just gonna be on the hook for a lot of shit, and then you're in the military too, so she's gonna have a, she's gonna have access to your TSP pension, all that shit. Fuck that, bro. Hell no, nah, man. If this was a battle, and you guys were fighting a war, she would always win. Yeah. So if you marry her, she would always win. She needs to stay in Vietnam if you're gonna do this. Yeah. Minimize uh, issues, my friend. I, I, I would have petitioned to get you're over right. here. If if she could get over here on her own without you marrying her, without a marriage visa, you you if you could get her over here in another way. Fine. But, uh, but, but I would not, I would not do the K one visa because then that means you're gonna have to have a real, a real marriage filed in the state, and bam, now the state's involved in your situation, right? Yeah, and the deed, I mean, the deed's already done. I told my family that it's not gonna happen. It's just the biggest reason why I wanted to call was I don't know, man. I felt really bad about it, and like my mom was like, "Don't worry, we know why you call back, bro. Don't worry, we 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 know why you call back. That's fine." But uh, c caller, also keep in mind as well, like. As a man, bro, like going through life, you're gonna, you're gonna have to say no to women that you love, bro. You're gonna have to, man. It, right. it sucks, but it's just part of course, bro. Yep, yep, yep. It, sucks, it happens, bro. man. It happens. But like I said before, there is a workaround. You just gonna have to be traveling. <laughs> <laughs> Don't bring it back, bro. <laughs> there All are right? more cars and lots, my friend. More cars yeah. out there. All right, man. You got it, bro. Take it easy. All right, thanks, bro. All right. Don't simp. All right. What do we got here next? But you know what's crazy though? What? A lot of people will laugh at him. But they're not the same yeah, boat, this, bro. bro. Yeah, a lot of people they're in the same yeah, boat. Yeah, man. They're in the same boat. Some of so. y'all right now talking shit in the chat got a girl right now that don't even like you, and you <laughs> niggas are out here talking to her, man. <laughs> oh my god, please Yo. love me. Actually, uh, Twitch. Let's get off of Twitch. Oh shit. We said yeah, that yeah, for yeah. so many times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh shit, I forgot about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. All right, all right, guys, come on over YouTube, to, to YouTube Rumble. or Rumble